Hello gamers, I am John, host of Video Games in the World. Today is the sixth episode of season two, and today we are touching on the history of Sega. For so many years, Sega has been a very successful company with multi-million dollar sales on the game series such as Sonic the Hedgehog, Virtua Fighter, Fantasy Star, Yakuza, and Total War. Sega is a Japanese multinational video game developer and publisher headquartered in Tokyo, Japan, with offices around the world. Sega developed and manufactured numerous home video game consoles from 1983 up until 2001. But after financial losses incurred from its Dreamcast console, the company restructured to focus on providing software as a third-party developer. It remains as the world's most prolific arcade producer with over 500 games in over 70 franchises on more than 20 different arcade system boards since 1981. Let us journey into the history of Sega, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy! Before Sega ever created video games, it had an early history. The origin of Sega can be traced to the 1940s, when it was called Service Games at the time. In that time, the world was in a dark time when World War II was brewing in Europe, and a year later, it would expand into America when the Japanese bombarded the Pearl Harbor military base in Hawaii. Founded in 1940 and based in Honolulu, Hawaii, Service games made jukeboxes and slot machines, selling them to the military. Then, 11 years later, they relocated to Tokyo when the United States government outlawed slot machines in U.S. territories. And after merging with another arcade manufacturer called Rosen Enterprises in 1965, they called themselves Sega, taking the first two letters of service games. In that same year, Rosen Enterprises grew to a chain of over 200 arcades when they merged with Nihon Gorakubusan, and that's how Sega was born. In 1983, Sega released its very first console, the SG-1000. It was cartridge-based, but not as powerful or popular as the Famicom, although it was quite a modest success in Japan but very popular in Taiwan. It was also released in Australia in 85, but failed to meet the sales expectations. The later versions also had the option for game cards, which was carried over to the first version of the Master System. On that same year, due to the video game crash of 83, Sega's revenues dropped an estimate $136 million. Although the SG-1000 was quite successful, Nintendo took over the throne with the NES. But was this the end of Sega and the console market? No, it was just the beginning. The later versions also had the option for game cards which was carried over to the first version of the Master System. The Sega Mark III released in Japan in 1985 was actually the first version of the Master System. It was rebranded as the Master System, but once again failed to find a solid market in Japan. Sega then released it in North America and contracted Tonka to do the marketing. Despite the fact that the MS was more powerful than the NES, the console still bombed. Due to a combination of Tonka's substandard marketing, the NES only 83% of the console market, and Nintendo telling third-party publishers they were not allowed to publish with Sega if they already had a relationship with them which was later overturned in court. Sega sold consoles in countries where Nintendo was not as prolific and found success. The Master System found itself in homes in places such as Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and, and Brazil. After the Master System 2 was released, it was bought by a lot of parents seeing it as a cheaper version of the Mega Drive or the Genesis as it was called as well. In 1991, Sega had a video game that met with great success rivaling Mario and Donkey Kong, and since then, he has become the official mascot of Sega. Sega 
Sega and Nintendo had become rivals which led to the console wars. The Super NES was released in 1991 which was a rival to the Genesis. Those two were 16-bit consoles and had great games of their own. Super NES had Super Mario World, A Link to the Past, Star Fox, Mega Man X, Kirby Superstar, F-Zero, and many more. While Sega was very successful with games such as Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, 3, Sonic Spinball, Sonic and Knuckles, Altered Beast, Fantasy Star, Streets of Rage, Shinobi 3, and a lot more. But Sega didn't only have consoles, it also had a handheld that competed against the Game Boy by Nintendo. It was called the Game Gear. However, due to issues with short battery life, lack of original titles, and weak support from Sega, the Game Gear was unable to surpass the Game Boy, selling approximately 11 million units. The Game Gear was succeeded by the Sega Nomad in 1995, and two years later, it was discontinued. Sega Genesis had an add-on known as a 32X which allowed players to play in 3D rendered games like Doom. However, it didn't last very long. There was also the Sega CD in which gamers played on a CD-ROM. Most video games on the CD were full motion adventure types like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the controversial video game Night Trap, which starred the late Dana Plato, who you know from the hit sitcom Different Strokes as Kimberly Drummond. It supported a library of over 200 video games created by Sega and an array of third-party publishers. There was also a Sonic game rendered in 3D for Sega CD. The Saturn was later released shortly after the arrival of the PlayStation, which led the gaming industry from 2D graphics into 3D rendered graphics. Resident Evil was one of its games, and also Symphony of the Night. The final console of the Sega was the Dreamcast. It competed against both the N64 and the PlayStation 1 in the late 1990s and met with great success in both Japan and North America. The Dreamcast was the first of many consoles to introduce online gaming. An analog 56K modem was also in included, allowing for online multiplayer. It featured titles such as the action puzzle title Choo Choo Rocket, Fantasy Star Online, the first MMORPG console-based video game, Quake 3 Arena, and Alien Front Online. The first console game with online voice chat as well, this was. The Dreamcast launch in, in Japan was a failure, launching with a small library of software and in the shadow of the upcoming PlayStation 2, the system would gain little ground despite several successful games in the region. NBA games released on the Dreamcast were also playable online. However, some video games that were released on the Genesis were making a comeback aside from famous titles like Sonic the Hedgehog. A primary example is Shakan, based on the comic book series of the same name by Robert A. Krause. In the Genesis, Shakan the Forever Man was well known for its unforgiving difficulty and a memory that stuck with many gamers for the rest of their lives. The new Shakan would feature blocking and almost the same gameplay mechanics as shown in the testing. Unfortunately, with the success of the Xbox and the PS2, the Dreamcast went under and with it, Shakan survival as its elements then went to Blood Omen 3. When the Dreamcast went under, so did Sega in the console business. The best games for the Dreamcast are the following. Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure 2, Power Stone, Power Stone 2, Sword of the Berserk, Guts Rage, and many more. Since the end of the Dreamcast, Sega had gone third party due to lack of sales and a lot of other things. But this was not the end of Sega, as it still had successful titles that went on the GameCube, the PS2, Xbox, PS3, Xbox 360, Wii, and so on. Sonic had its great games. But many would say that the worst Sonic game ever was the 2006 title, Sonic the Hedgehog, for the PS3 and the 360. But of course, Sonic had its comebacks with games like The Secret Rings, Unleashed, The Black Knight, Generations, Mania, and many more. Even players were very excited to play as Sonic in Super Smash Bros. 
even if Sega is now third party, it still has its awesome titles. But who knows if in the future Sega may come back to the console market like Atari is doing right now. Only time can tell, and as they say, tomorrow never knows. And finally in conclusion, I still believe that Sega is one of the best things that the gaming industry ever had, especially with consoles like the Dreamcast and the Genesis. I still have good memories playing with friends and family members on the Genesis with games like Sonic, Street Fighter 2, Altered Beast, Shakan, and many more. That's all gamers. Don't forget to comment, share, subscribe, and rate. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and support me on Patreon. This is John, host of Video Games in the World. Have a good one. Bye-bye.